I'm Sophie De Winter and this is my cover of I Bet That You Look Good On The Dance Floor by The Arctic Monkeys. Hi, this is Chris from Lesson Jake, and I'm here with Alice from Express Radio. Yeah, you are indeed. That's, the, that's the introduction. For CUTV as well, we're filming, and yeah, Express Radio, but 
Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Are you looking forward to the gig tonight? Is it? I, I am looking forward to the gig. Yeah, have it's you sold been? Sold out. Yeah, I noticed that as well, actually. Have we been here before? Yeah, we've been to Cardiff. Yes, we've played this exact uh, building many times. Have you? Yes. Has it worked out good gigs in the past? Um, every time we've been here, it's been been great, nice. to my recollection. Yeah. Oh, cool. So you've been together for over 20 years. Well, not sure. together, but together. Well, yeah. but, you know, together yes. <laughs> for over 20 years. Yep. Did you ever think when you started out, like, I want to, you know, did you ever see yourself being a band for 20 years, or was it just a sort of a hobby? No, you know, it got to, I remember being around the five-year mark as a band, we started getting asked that question, like, you guys have been around for like five years now, do you ever think it would be that long? And no, you just, it was something that was, uh, was something that was just a fun hobby, like you said, that turned mm -hmm. into, you know, something big. this, you know. Yeah. And considering you've been together for so long, what would you, like, how do you manage to stay so close? Because imagine if you're touring as well, you must... Well, we have a, a really small bus that we, <laughs> we cram into. You know, we, yeah. we, we had them uh, uh, take the dimensions down on the bus. <laughs> so we, we sleep really close together, so that's how we stay close. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you just, you know, I think the, the older we've gotten, you start to be able to, uh, to know each other's uh, idiosyncrasies and know, mm -hmm. you know, okay, yeah. this guy's not a morning person. Don't fuck with him right now. Yeah. This guy's this and leave him alone and... We get along pretty well, considering you know it's sometimes it's you know, and also we we don't tour like we did when we were younger. I mean, we were out on the road seven, eight, nine months a year. Ouch. I mean, it was yeah, and then you know and be home for a day or two and then gone again. But you know we, yeah. we tour a little smarter now, so that makes it makes it easier too. Mm. Oh, cool, that's great. Do you find that is there any do you have any odd kind of like pre-gig rituals as it were? Like, do you do anything that you always do? We we did game? one tour. We uh, I don't recall who started this. I think it was, we had this fill-in trombone player, but you ever heard of ginseng? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so. a, it's like an Asian, like, uh, yeah. uh, liquid that gives you energy. And uh, we would drop down into our, into our knickers. Do they call them knickers for men here, too? No, that's, that's, that's for pants. females. So it'd be pants, yeah, like, pants. like your underwear or whatever. Yeah. We drop down on those and we take a shot of ginseng right before we got on stage. We pull our pants back up before we got on stage. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's the only ritual that I could ever recall. That was a long time ago. Shotting ginseng. Shot of ginseng. Never, never alcohol. Just, you know, yeah. a nice bit of vitamins or whatever it is. That's right. Happened to you over the nice years, because well. obviously your career spans a while now, where you've been genuinely shocked that it's happened, or you look back and you think, well, did that really happen? You know, a lot of things, you know, things that happened in in England. I mean, we were a band for 10 years, uh, uh, 2001, 2002 time period, and it was, you know, the absolute uh, most massive our band ever was on a commercial level. You know, we had a label that got behind us in the UK, and, uh, you know, we were playing multiple shows by ourselves in rooms like this that were selling out. Mm. And, um, you know, I remember doing some festival download or some festival where we were you know and mind you we were in our late 20s at this point it had already been a band for 10 years and we had had this you know steady level of success in the states and in other parts of the world and you know and there's like 30 girls chasing us across the field you know screaming <laughs> wanting their poster signing wanting to touch us and we're just like laughing it was like yeah. funny to us because that would have happened when we were first starting it might have yeah. been like but we were able to have some years and some maturity and, and just be able to look at it for what it's worth and go, okay, this is cool. It's not going to last <laughs> forever. You know, you're going to, you know, yeah. you can't always stay, stay at the top. But that was, that was really cool. And then mm. playing Reading Festival. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, we played main stage in Reading a couple times. And that's just like the most massive crowd you could, you could play in front of. So, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, moments where you, you know, pinch yourself and be like, this is crazy. This is cool. Wow. But when you started out, you listed bands such as like Early Green Day and stuff like that, stuff like that as your influences. If you were to design like a playlist of three songs, one to wake you up in the morning, one to get you through the day, one to send you to sleep at night, what do you think it would kind of include? Um, the first song would be that song that the guy, you ever heard of Disturbed? He goes, ooh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Yeah, that song would wake me up because that'll wake anybody up. Shock you into um, it. Yeah, the second song would be... Um, uh, any song by The Who. Fair enough. Any song. Yeah. And then the third song would be, give me a really terrible English band. Um, let me think here. Uh, terrible English band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, was UB40 English? I don't know, what? Were you um, Shows yeah, so yeah. Red Red Wine by UB4 oh, would Red be, wine. Yeah. be my last song. I think that would probably say Because I'd have to drink eight well. bottles of wine to forget that I heard the song. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. Some people might love it. Not so much a love for you, I guess. But um, 
I've always wanted to know this, but who do you think would win in a fight between Batman and Superman? Um, I am going to go with Superman. Superman, how yeah. come? Um, he's the Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know what else. Enough said. No, yeah. I'd probably go Superman as well. Yeah. He can fly. He can fly, too. Yeah. So if Batman was really kicking his ass, he could he could fly away. Just fly off the like, yeah. see ya. Go get yeah. a gun and come back and shoot him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Finds a way. But that's all my questions for you today. All right, thank you. Thank very you. Much for speaking this to has me. been Alice and Chris We're here from uh, what was it, Extreme? Express Radio. Express Radio <laughs> and CUTV. Yes. You yeah. Know, right. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cringe myself out at the end. <laughs>